The Arts Club has two shops constructing over 15 shows a year. This is where I talk shop with our designers and crew. Hi, welcome back to Shop Talk. I'm Ace Martins, and I'm joined today by Christine Reimer, the costume designer for Pride and Prejudice, and Kirsten McGee, our head of wardrobe at the Arts Club Theatre. Hey. Uh, Christian does all the shows at the Arts Club, right? All the all costumes the for all the... All the costumes for all the shows. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of costumes. I don't know, maybe 100 to 150 a season? Wow. What do you think? That's a lot of people. <laughs> That's, well, it's all the actors yeah. at the Arts Club. Yeah. So you're dealing with 17 of them in Pride and Prejudice. 17. Uh, yes. So can you tell me a bit about the process of designing for Pride and Prejudice? Okay, so after reading the script, of course, um, there's, there's discussions with the director, and, and then it's decided if we're, if we're, if we're going to stick with the time period that the, the play was written in. So I get, I get to do a lot of research then on how the dresses were made, looking, looking at tons of uh, beautiful photo photographs and books and then I, and then I need to look around town too see in, in other uh, theaters if they might have some some garments we can we can use and what period um, is Pride and Bridges? this is 1810 it's not a period that's that's done much in in town here so so we we built a lot here so these these are a lot of or, original dresses for for wow. this show that's great so it is a lot of work to build a dress yeah um, like, what's the uh, process for building one dress, if you take me through it? Christine brings me a beautiful drawing. A uh, drawing? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that. And uh, then we and have a discussion. With the cutter, we talk about um, how, how they can be, be made for stage as well. And, and, mm -hmm. and Chris, Kristen yeah. has, has a lot of in, input, too. Is it, is it a fast change? Do right. we need to do a zipper down the back, which they never used? Yeah. Um, is it... Yeah. They, we, we rarely have, have uh, garments going over, over the head um, because it can mess up the hair or wigs. Yeah. So everything you step into or pull up over your shoulders. Yeah. Or... Mm. Try and have something that can be done up in the back. But then on, on stage, you want it right every night the, that, that same way. So, mm -hmm. so it's actually faked. So, so there's, there's elastic in the, in the right. spots to, mm -hmm. to make it snap, snap back to the right, right spot each, each right. night. Lots mm -hmm. of little secrets so, that make it theater -y. Yeah, Yeah, mm -hmm. even, even a lot of the bows that are tied yeah. are stitched down tight and then you just snap, snap it on. They don't, they don't tie them every, every night. Because we want it to look perfect every, every time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and what's particular about building a costume for theater? Like you let uh, you'll leave allowances in the seams a lot more than you would in like a yep. commercially built thing. Definitely, we we try to do that because we are all even when we're building specifically for a show, we're always thinking of that this will be an asset that goes into our stock, and uh, so to have a little bit of room to let it out or you know if, to be able to take it in for another show or another remount of the same show or something mm -hmm. like that uh, is super valuable to us here in the costume shop right yeah and we do have a lot of dresses here at the a costume lot. shop yeah but unfortunately we none of this none period of the regency period no so a bunch of new dresses yeah we built about 30 dresses <laughs> 30 dresses for this show and how much time do you think it took to build like one dress let's say I guess uh, Sarah would take maybe, uh, she would take a day or two and she drafted a, base, a basic pattern and then she did a number of variations on the pattern uh -huh. to get the variations in the bodices that we wanted for these. So and necklines cut a yeah. slight, slightly different way, the yeah. backs maybe slightly different. Just small little differences to, so that they don't look like we've just cut the same dress over and over again. And then she uh, makes a muslin, so we, we use a plain cotton and she makes um, a portion of the garment and we put it on the mannequin and we see how does it fall and is it the right way and then Christine has a look at it there and she says, oh, you know, definitely I'd like to have this a lower neckline or a little bit lower in the back and then we wait until we actually we take those muslins into our first fittings often with our actors and then we can just draw right on those fabrics and um, and then we make the patterns from those those muslins great and then we can cut the real fabric and go from there go so from, there. from from that point it's probably about four hours to cut a dress and then it's probably about 16 hours to 30 hours depending on the comp 
how complicated it is to sew the dress into where you're ready for another fitting. And, wow. And so then, 30 dresses is about 30 weeks work. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> it. breaks down but, like that about. <laughs> but we did it in six. Wow, that's and, great. And there, there were three teams is, that's is true. what we, yeah. we call them. A team is, yeah. is a cutter who, yeah. who drafts the, the patterns and mm -hmm. then sew, sewers. So yeah. Yeah. were there about six sewers? Yes, we had three, about three cutters. we had about two sewers per cutter on this show, and then plus a couple of other people working on alterations and things like that. What about your history as a costume designer? How'd you get involved? I always think that I came about it through color. Um, I, I uh, col color and character. Um, we we traveled a lot when I, when I was young. My my dad taught Spanish and German, so we lived in Costa Rica and Germany and, and North America. And I and I saw a lot of diff different kinds kinds of folks. And then I went on to study art art his history and got tired of writing papers, so I wanted to, wanted to do hands hands on work mm -hmm. and and studied tex textile design, so so dyeing, color, printing on fabric. Um, and, and I, I looked around to see what kind of job I could get doing, doing that. Mm -hmm. And the Stratford Festival is a place that, yep. that would, would employ, employ somebody for about eight, eight months out of, the, out of the year. So I applied and they were like, oh, you've got great skill, but you have no theater. Um, so then I came out to UBC here to, yeah. to study costume design. So I was like, theater, I should study theater. Uh, and, and so as soon as, as, as soon as I started here, Doing doing my masters in in costume design, I I, I got the call from um, Stratford, right, to go die. So yeah. so I, I straddled Canada, Canada and, and and did both um, at the at the same time, dyeing dyeing fab fabric, and then designing here. Yeah, great. And what about you, Kirsten? How'd you get started? Oh, um, I this is a field I always wanted to work in ever since I was a teenager, and then just started. Um, volunteering anywhere that would take me and I did some volunteering very early on in uh, at the Playhouse which is uh, unfortunately now gone and then just answered every ad in the back of the Georgia Strait for you know fringe shows looking for a costume designer and just slowly built up the type of work that I was able to do yeah. and uh, you know got into prop building as well but um, always just loved costuming so Great. Just stuck to it. Oh, it's the dream team. I think the costumes look beautiful for Fried Prejudice. Thank so thanks Very for chatting fun. with me. Uh, we'll talk about my past at a uh, future shop talk, maybe. Uh, thanks. Mm -hmm.